You ever wonder if I were here? It's one of life's great mysteries, isn't it? In the summer of 1994, a small town in the state of Washington experienced an unusual type of precipitation. Contact with this precipitation resulted in citizens feeling ill and supposedly even resulted in some local animals dying. Even now, no one is quite sure what fell from the sky that night. So today, we discuss the puzzling mystery of the Oakville Blobs. This is Red Web. Welcome back, Task Force, to another episode of Red Web. It is a Monday, so you know we've got another mystery for you. I'm your resident mystery enthusiast, Trevor Collins, and going with me on this journey into this mystery, hearing it for the very first time, Alfredo Diaz. This is like a Twilight Show episode premise. Yeah, it kind of is. It's a lighthearted one, a shorter one today. You know, a little palate cleanser. I wouldn't eat the blobs. Yeah. But for the mind, they're a bit of a palate cleanser with all those... Dark, heavy ones. We so you said about. precipitation, but there's blobs. So they actually like formed into a thing. Oh, it was rain and blobs. What? Yeah, little uh, goops. You've never heard of this? No. Okay, well that's normal every week. But <laughs> but I figured maybe this <laughs> that one. That's pretty normal. <laughs> I figured this one maybe. The like goops from the sky. Right, and I know how much you love goops. Like goops <laughs> and ghouls. <laughs> You're right. But yeah, these are the Oakville blobs. Little kind of clear. Goopies came from the sky. Oh, they're clear too? Yeah, and in our lifetime. What? Yeah. Well, let me just take you right into the story. Like I said, it's a little shorter, so we're going to talk about the event and then the testing that went on with some of these blobs and then the theories that remain. Despite all the scientific knowledge we have, we got buff brains out there. Mm -hmm. We still don't know exactly what caused these blobs or what these blobs consisted of. So as always, we're going to talk about the theories at the end. And before we dive into today's episode, I want to give a small reminder that next week we are taking the week off from releasing an episode, so if you feel confused, that would be the reason. And in lieu of that, go check out our friends over at 30 Morbid Minutes. They're our sister podcast. They got a lot of really cool macabre stuff right in this same lane. So you can still get that mysterious fix that you so crave. All right. Let me take you back to a summer evening in Seattle. Okay. On August 7th, 1994, residents of Oakville, Washington, woke up to find a translucent, gelatinous substance had rained down upon their city sometime in the night. Oakville is a small, forcing town about 88 miles or 141 kilometers southwest of Seattle, Washington, a city famous for its rainy season and overcast skies. But I'm going to bust, I'm going to bust this wide open. All right. Some Seattle propaganda for you, even though it's true. Houston, Chicago, New York, they all get more rain. But Seattle's known as this, like... Gloomy. Right. Rainy. Yeah. Place. Mm-hmm. Wait. Except so for the summer. Who gets more Beautiful rain? summers. Basically everybody. What? Houston, Chicago, New York, they all get more rain than Seattle. Do you know that? Then is just Seattle just super gloomy? Is that why everyone's just... I think it's because they're kind of like in the Pacific Northwest. They get their overcast. They do get rain, but it's mostly the overcast that I think people attach to. Yeah. Like I a Cleveland. do Seattle. No? Too much, no, too much overcast like that. It just... You can bring on depression. That's true. It can definitely do that. But their yeah. summers are mm, yeah, very gorgeous. gorgeous. All right. So these blobs, as they have been famously referred to, were no bigger than a single grain of rice, which is interesting because I've known about this mystery for some time. And when you Google image search this, it shows like hand size blobs, right? Something that you could pick up like a jellyfish. So I was very interested that this is actually like little little pellets upwards of a grain of rice, sometimes mostly smaller even. This is, okay, so this is one of those type of mysteries where how are we just either, how is it a mystery? How do we not know this, right? Mm-hmm. How uh, have not like the greatest minds all gathered right. where we're like flown to this location to start dissecting and putting things in little beakers and swirling around like liquids in, in clear crystal jars or whatever, you mm-hmm, know what I mean? Mm-hmm. Gloves on gloves, hazmat. Gloves on like, your gloves with your crystal jars. Right, hazmat, and... suits, everything like right. that. And then on top of that, it's just like, how do we, I don't know. How is this a mystery? I feel like it's something that like. That's what, that's that's what like, I'm saying. That's man. like, we should explore this. Mm-hmm. We should know about this. Right. This should not be a mystery. This should be a thing that we know about. You think if blobs were raining from the skies. Right. It's a big, huge alarm. And also, how does the world not, how do I not know? Right. I'm so surprised. To your point, I'm so surprised that we don't have an answer for this. This feels like such a big event. Mm-hmm. Enough so. Enough of a big event. Like, listen. 
when E.T. rolled into town, they were putting tubes down the streets and wearing hazmat suits and hiding all the Reese's pieces. True. Okay? Blobs start raining from the sky? Mm, let's move on. It's Seattle. Yeah. Then again, this is the tinfoil hat on. Um, mm -hmm. Who's to say that they... Yeah, just, you know, they didn't just downplay it. Maybe. Maybe that's it. Maybe they know and they didn't want to give the answer. Right. So the first reported sighting came from Officer David Lacey, who was driving when the blobs began falling, hitting his car's windshield. This was around 3 a.m., marking the earliest known sighting of the blobs. Again, I'm thinking about this grain of rice size ploppers. I don't know if I'm going to call them blobs. Blobs, like, at what size do you start calling something blob and start calling something like a little drizzle? I would probably say goon. if I would call it a blob if it's like 70% of the size of my palm. Mm. Now, are we talking little palms, big palms? I'm talking like a... Give me some sort of... I don't unit. know. I have... How do I measure this palm here? This man's I, about to reinvent the ruler. I just don't... <laughs> <laughs> He's holding his hand up to his other hand going, uh, hmm, how do I? How do I? Mm -hmm. It's about we knuckles go. worth. He's Now he's making all sorts of hand gestures. Almost like gang signs in a way. Yeah, he, he well. <laughs> it's just, just a crip. I, I can't measure that. I don't know how to measure that. I'm going to go ahead and oh, say wait, about three or four inches. Wait. Okay. Hold on now. Credit card. Boom. All right. So you know the Apple like MagSafe wallet? Uh huh. It's, that's the size of my palm. Got it. Okay. But a little shorter. <laughs> okay. So literally a credit card. Yeah, I'm with you. When you start saying blobs, you're not, you know, you're not giving me like, when you cry, per these definitions, you're oh, dropping like, blobs, baby. That's what I say. When I was, you know, God. when I was back in my emo days, I was dropping blobs. <laughs> well, there's two things. The grain of rice is just like, that's not a blob. That's right. just, that's a teardrop. Right. Okay. People paint that on their face, gang tat. Mm -hmm. Now, mm -hmm. they paint them on. <laughs> <laughs> now, that's part one of it. Part two, if this was making people sick, mm -hmm. like, I'm not saying that I'm out there like a wide receiver or mm -hmm. like, a, let's say running back. Okay. And I'm out there, you know what I mean? Like, juking and spinning and stiff arming these blobs. Okay. But like, if, if it's like, it, it's already bad that it's clear. Yes. But like, if it's the size of like a credit card, Okay, which is my palm size. Right. Um, then I feel like you could try and manage your way around it from like right, I like park at the house it. and I gotta run into like, I don't know, across my driveway to the front door. I could probably calculate how many blobs I got hit by. But if it's the size of a grain of rice, it just it you're just getting hit everywhere. You don't even right. know how much of it you're being exposed to. Right. It's just it's, it's hard to calculate. Yeah. It's, it's very interesting, and we'll, we'll get into it, but eventually, you know, people describe these downpours of blobs as torrential. They weren't drizzles. They weren't kind of periodic. It, like, it was coming down. Yeah. Um, and then so, for the task force members that don't know what torrential means, hit them with it. Mm-hmm. Uh, raining like cats and dogs. Boom. There you go. Right? Uh, I'll be real. I googled torrential, the definition. Because <laughs> people say torrential rains, but I, I've never... I've never, never looked heard it of up. torrential rain. It, yes, basically raining a lot. There's just a lot of rain in the air, and, and to that point, you're not dodging it. Um, I would like to see you try to dodge rain, though. That, that was a very <laughs> compelling visual. Um, but coming back to the officer here, driving at 3 a.m., this is when they first notice these blobs. Obviously, they start hitting the windshield. This man's going, I'm just going to use my windshield wipers. That's what they were invented for oh, at least days ago to, yeah, to handle this. Like... I guess, yeah, if you smear it around, is it goopy? Is it, That's is, a very is it, good question. You know, like, these are the kind of things that... Yeah. Granted, I no one should taste it, but does, what kind of taste does it have? What kind of smell does it have? These are all very good questions, it's, minus the taste. It's so... <laughs> it's also too tangible. It's very tangible. Right? You We're get your like, hands all over you, this. Normally, we want things to be tangible. This is like, we don't... This is like too much... It's like, literally something you could touch, feel, and yeah. like, it'll hurt you. Oh, yeah. So, he uses the wipers, and to answer your question, they just smeared... They didn't wipe off like water, they smeared, creating a greasy smudge across the glass. So, Lacey decided to pull over to a gas station to oh, no. stop, inspect, and hopefully remove the blob residue happening on his, uh, his windshield. Now, in an interview with Unsolved Mysteries, he said, quote, The substance was very mushy, almost like if you had jello in your hand. There was another resident, Dottie Hearn. She saw the blobs outside and picked one up, thinking it was just hail, but it turned out to be a clear jelly-like substance. Later that same day, Officer Lacey began feeling sick and complaining he had flu-like symptoms such as fatigue and nausea. Coming back to Hearn, she also felt ill 
later that day experiencing chills, blurry vision, vertigo, and nausea. So much so that later on, her adult children found her passed out, appearing to be sweaty and pale. Very concerning. It doesn't seem like they touched it for that long. It does not at all. Like, just even minor kind of engagement with it directly to the skin. Very high level of toxicity coming from the sky. Yeah. That or, you know, we'll, we'll flag this as a point of intrigue because I do want to take it at face value, but it does raise some questions because when people started taking this to the lab, and we'll get that in a second, but when people started taking this to the lab, there's nothing that outright seems nefarious. How is that not alarming? I know. So like, not just the government, but the masses of people. Mm-hmm. Goop coming from the sky. And you're, just, and, you're just, and you're just going, nah, it's cool and though. It's toxic goop. I right. don't uh. Right. So the adult children of her and took her to the hospital where doctors began uh, to inspect her, take a look at what was going on. And they believed that she was simply suffering from a severe inner ear infection. She ended up being hospitalized for three full days. Not something minor. I was in the hospital less for appendicitis for what it's worth. Symptoms like an ear infection? So her symptoms were like blurry vision, vertigo, nausea, yeah. chills. Yeah. The hospital, the doctors seemed to think that this was an inner ear infection, which if it's like one of your sinuses or inner ear, the, that kind of tube the, the, that connects Yeah, them, the imbalance of it. Uh, I think it's the eustachian tube. It, it can kind of like interact, but either mm -hmm. way, it can definitely cause vertigo. It can yeah. play with the sands, the calcium deposits in your ears and yep. make you feel like you're constantly tumbling. So it stands to reason, but... Was that from the blobs? Was it coincidental? Mm -hmm. How does that then play with the just, officer's symptoms? Yeah, you, know? you just look at the other um, the other symptoms that mm -hmm. other people had. Yeah. Th this. So this is real? This, this was absolutely real. This is 100%. 100% real? This yeah. happened? Yes, but the only thing... It's, I, I'm so glad you're here with this gut check because this happened in 94. Science was... I mean, it, it had been doing its reps by that point. It was getting its buff on, okay? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Uh, DNA's coming around the block. We got the internet yeah, coming. Those are, honestly, if you're, like, if we're talking about, like, science mm -hmm. and, like, working out, those are big gains. Right, those are massive DNA, gains. Proud. A lot of, I'm proud. I'm, I, there's got to be, like, a huge uptick in just people locked up or convicted because of DNA. Like, mm -hmm. Yeah. Absolutely. Yeah. So now we have the officer... And Dottie Hearn, both feeling unwell. But they're not the only individuals that came into contact with this stuff that started having symptoms. Many residents of Oakville themselves reported similar symptoms after interacting with this mysterious blob, at which point both Lacey and Hearn's families began suspecting that the blobs must have been the source of this illness. I mean, obviously, we have hindsight. We, we know that we're talking yeah. about the blobs. But in the moment, it was just kind of a, oh, no, mom's not doing well. Let's get her to the hospital. Yep. As a separate case, the officer is feeling unwell. But but then things started to unroll, and they were like, I think it was these blobs. Would you be touching these blobs barehanded if suddenly it just started raining blobs? No. Yeah. What no. Would, you, would you do anything with it, or would you just take a photo for the gram? Um, if I'm in my... I mean, I would take photos of it. Yeah. If I was at my house, hopefully the corgis aren't outside, mm -hmm. because then... They would get sick. Yes. And then they'd right. get they'd probably me eat it. sick. Yeah, they'd try to, like, yeah, sniff at it, poke mm -hmm. at it. Um, so I'd stay inside the house. Hopefully everyone's in there. Um, if I'm in my car, real talk, mm -hmm. I'm hitting the biohazard mode. Oh, there I is that. I do have one in my car. <laughs> I think this is a good reminder to make sure everyone's outdoor buckets are open and wide and just have your pail ready <laughs> in case the sky, you know, you hook them onto your rear view mirror. <laughs> I, I don't know. Uh, but, but if you got a sample, see, if I was there, n you know, maybe, maybe nowadays in 94, I would have been crawling, but you know, oh, nowadays, yeah, I mean, that is 94. I'd I mean, scoop up a sample and I'd probably freeze it for like future scientists to, to debuff. And then they'd go, it's, it's, we can't, we can't use it. Right. And you destroyed it while you, freezing. Exactly. Hmm. Well, I, hmm. Yeah. Because I wouldn't know if it also is airborne, you know? Oh, like if it's got like you have no clue an odor or like right. a viral if it's element by touch to it or whatnot. I I would just see goopy stuff fall from the sky, but I don't know what this is. I'm not gonna touch it. Right, I'd be like, I've seen Watchmen. I yeah. know better than to go yeah. poking around. Only stuff. involved. Now it wasn't just the one time happening overnight. Over the following three weeks, the blobs rained down a total of six times, covering 20 square miles in Oakville. If you prefer, that's 51.8 square kilometers. 
One thing to clarify about these rains is that they weren't like sprinklings of fun baby jellies. Citizens reported describing the blob rains as, like I said, torrential. The area was getting hammered by this goo, and that's the definition of torrential. <laughs> <laughs> it's just so screwed up in so many ways. It's it's very yeah Be, because it's, it's not just it's, yucky. An, an event, it's like a series of events that happens. Mm -hmm. Then, uh, like obviously, you're gonna try and get back into the rhythm of your normal day, right. your everyday life, and then it could hit at any time. Mm -hmm. How does that affect you know going to the store, like? If other people have come in contact, is that it, like how is it transmitted? Is it transmittable? Yeah, like, it yeah. Just, there's just I would be full paranoid. It, it, what, then, yeah. What what level of safety right. are we talking about? Can we can we but, work with latex and pr protect ourselves? Mm -hmm. Walk outside with an umbrella and we're good? Or but, is it like no no no? This is a true biohazard from. But top then to also, bottom. how is the news? How is it like not all over the news? Oh, I mean, it was. It was. was. Well, it was in local newspapers. We'll, local? We'll talk about, how is this not like? I, I mean, at least state newspapers around it Washington. Give the right? government time to like their stuff together yeah and have a plan i don't know like this just feels like a movie it does feel like <laughs> a movie it really does and then like the blobs start to coordinate and right. swallow people whole. yeah what is that called the blob, the blob. that movie yeah. good one before we get into the testing arena though which is very exciting i, I do want to kind of talk about one other interesting resident here beverly roberts she also became sick during this time, but what's more interesting here, and also even sadder, is that she reported at least six animals died as a result of contact with these blobs. No. Yeah. These animals included a raven, a frog, and a newly adopted kitten. So, basically, young or otherwise small creatures that I would say the blob to organism ratio would be yeah. higher with these smaller creatures. So whatever toxins might be in these things, whatever bacteria might have been in these blobs, smaller creatures were more likely to succumb to whatever was going on. Yeah, I feel like how weren't there just a bunch of dead birds then? That's a great point. I feel like everywhere. I feel like also your question about going to the grocery store becomes way more valid when you realize small creatures are, are dying to this yeah. stuff. That's kind of terrifying. People have animals, people have pets, people are people. They're also alive, by mm -hmm. the way. Everyone's breathing, I hope. So what's the ramifications on you, your personal health? Just living your life. This this almost starts to hit the point of a crisis where you're like, government, let's get this sorted. What is going yeah. on? We need answers, right? How is like the military not rolling? It? Like, I just don't understand, like, you know, Well, they're going to pop shots at the sky like it's... Well, I, I don't know, or at least like, you just have no clue. Yeah. How are you not uh, maybe locking things down, trying to keep people safe? Oh. Well, then like, you start thinking about the water supply. That's what I'm saying. It, oh, it, man. It just spreads to so many different that's things. True. How is it just isn't like hit the big red button, DEFCON 5? Right. Like, did, Christian, do they call this like a disaster zone? I don't know. What they, what do they call that? When like something's so bad, they're like, we got to declare a natural disaster. Like, like you said, Fredo, have the army roll in, make sure there's bottled water, make sure that we're like looking after people. Is that something that would happen to us in... Or did it happen? I don't know. I don't think, at least from from what we had researched, we didn't see anything that said, yeah, like the government interfered and came and claimed it was a natural disaster or claimed it was a quarantine zone or anything like that. Right. I can try to do some digging, but I, I don't think so. Yeah, I didn't think so either. That's but I did, wild. But I did at least want to like see if you could find anything in a cursory glance because that is wild. In fact, in an article from The Chronicle, a local newspaper, Robert shared that at least 12 of her friends also claimed to have witnessed dead animals after the blob rains. So whether they were personal pets or otherwise animals out yonder, yeah, there was definitely at least a small impact. And there. it's not like a drizzle like this was coming down. Right. Torrential, which we all know the definition right. of. Yes, we do. <laughs> so let's move into the testing. What did people see when they took these blobs and put them under yes. really close looking eyeglasses? Is that with lasers? The the, the Look at look at it in the thermal goggles. And I like all those tests actually. <laughs> <laughs> I like that. It doesn't happen, but I, spoilers. But I like that. So Dottie Hearn's daughter, Sunny Barcliffe, was concerned about what these Oakville blobs were, and she was wondering if they could be what was causing her mother's illness. So good on her for actually putting a few clues together and scooping up some samples. There was a doctor where Hearn was hospitalized, Doctor David Little. He put the blobs under a microscope and a lab technician claimed to have seen human white blood cells. Very interesting. That's one of the few things that are found in these blobs. Barcliffe then sent a sample of the blobs to the Washington Department of Health as well as the Department of Ecology. 
Mike McDowell at the Department of Health found the blobs contained two types of bacteria. Strap in, folks, I'm about to speak science. Pseudomonas fluorescens and Enterobacter cloacae. Man, science has some complicated right. sounds. They really had to make it hard. The first of which, I'm not going to repeat them, uh, the PF, the first one, is generally considered harmless to humans, though in rare cases it can cause infections in people who are immunocompromised. In such cases, it can cause fevers, chills, nausea, and sometimes pneumonia. Hence the fact oh, that we had... Mm -hmm. damn. Yeah. And you can check to see if they're immune compromised. You can definitely do that. That or with high enough exposure, potentially it doesn't even matter if you have enough of this bacteria hitting you. Right, that's true. You know, maybe, maybe that's what's happening. This bacteria can be found in moist environments such as soil and water. So it's not super uncommon in, in that case. Now, the second bacteria, EC, is a common one found in the gut, as well as water, sewage, soil, and food. Again, this one is also usually harmless, except for cases of compromised immune systems. And in these cases, it can cause respiratory infections or urinary tract infections. Oh my God. There was a big water source somewhere that had these chemicals. Mm -hmm. It was absorbed into the sky. Right. Made a cloud. Clouds came down with it. This man just figured out the entire water this, cycle. This, <laughs> the yep, cycle of yep, the water that, I just system, described the cycle stuff. of water. <laughs> that is what I just did. And guess what? Cracked the case wide Cracked open. The case wide but I mean, open. like that, that's what this is telling me. Absolutely. Now, at the Department of Ecology, we have Mike Osweiler, who found that the blobs were organic and that they came from a once living creature, or so he believes. They also found that the blobs themselves may have been a bacteria, though which bacteria exactly was not specified. So to be totally clear, what is being posited right now is that these small, potentially grains of rice size globs mm -hmm. are actually just enlarged cells, which is not unheard of. Cells can actually be quite large. For a single cell organism, you can have like a little acorn or something. Damn. But that's really interesting. Then then the question then comes down to why and yeah. from where. Per historic mysteries, quote, Osweiler told the Seattle Post Intelligencer that the blobs contained a number of cells of various sizes. He believed that they had come from a dead creature, but the creature was not human. The cells had no nuclei, meaning that they could not be from human white blood cells or of human origin at all. Now, this is where I start to get my little brain confused. Okay. We've got multiple bacterias, different sizes. Mm -hmm. The thing itself could be a bacteria, if I'm understanding this correctly, but they don't have any nuclei in these cells. But then, and I'm, I'm spilling the beans here, someone else is going to come through and say that they're eukaryotic cells, i.e. they have nuclei. So this is a very interesting situation. I just want to hang on this moment for a second, because in 94, when they're investigating this stuff, we're like, cool, we're finding out about the bacteria. Maybe we're going to get somewhere multiple people are testing this thing and it's like ending up in three different directions yeah that's not helping guys doing a couple more reps that's what i'm saying put it in the bucket in the fridge next to the wedding cake and just let it hang until science has evolved yeah i mean if anything that they do just that maybe come to i don't know because like yeah the fact that like they're getting different answers and they're contradicting each other mm -hmm. like i don't know i feel like Ideally, I'd want them to get together mm -hmm. and triple, double check everyone's work. You know right. I mean? The scientific method. Yeah. Yeah. So to quickly recap before moving on, Dr. David Little at the hospital where Hearn was hospitalized, actually, looks at these things under the microscope, claims to see human white blood cells. Then you have both the Department of Ecology and the Department of Health, both unable to confirm the presence of human white blood cells. But then you have others within those departments saying that they're organic, coming from a living creature that isn't human, but they also could be bacteria. I mean, science, or more specifically, scientists, are just all over the place right now. Mm -hmm. Now, Barclift, which was the daughter of Dottie Hearn, she ended up taking a sample to a private lab where lab technician Tim Davis claimed that the blobs contained eukaryotic cells which meant that it came from a living thing. This does confirm the idea that it came from a living entity, but it does raise the question of, is there a nuclei or not? Because per the Nature Journal, eukaryotes are organisms whose cells contain a nucleus and other membrane-bound organelles. There is a wide range of eukaryotic organisms, including animals, plants, fungi, protists, as well as most algae. 
So I don't know, Task Force, there's a lot of you guys out there doing all sorts of different things. I need the hive mind. Am I getting confused on this? I might not be buff enough, but I'm oh. very curious as to like, what is actually happening here? And it, it could just be straight up the confusion that led for this to be a permanent mystery. Because right. if we had answers, I don't know if we'd be here talking about it. True. Yeah, I mean, the fact that like everyone is coming together and getting different answers and even within the same department getting different answers. Right. I just, it's a mess. It's got it's me a twisted. Mess. I feel like, you know, I want to make sure that I present this data in a clear and concise way. But then these tests come through and just don't even know what they want to say. We finally have like something that is, I would even go as far as to say overly tangible. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Too we, yeah, too tangible. Too tangible. There is such a thing. This is it or an example of it. Then we have a bunch of scientists there testing. It's not like other cases where uh, evidence is lost or mm -hmm. whatnot or, right. or it's so old. It's like lost the time or whatever. Now we have it. It's just we can't break it down. The experts in their fields are just being scattered in multiple directions. Damn it. <laughs> yep. And because of all that, because of all the different tests and the different angles on this thing, that is what made this thing so mysterious, leading us to even this day being unclear on exactly what these blobs contained and what their true origin could have possibly been. Well, hello there, Task Force. It is that time in the episode where I pause and talk directly to your eardrums. But hey, we're going to do something a little different. I've gathered the, the team, the squad. They're here. And so I'm, I'm not only talking to you, Task Force, but I'm talking to you, Fredo. What's up? Jillian. Hi. And so I'm excited to uh, share this gap in the mystery with the two of you. Did you know? Did you remember? May 4th, Fredo, we got the live stream. Yeah, where we We're going to be selling the uh, tinfoil hat. The baseball hat with the inner lining that's it's, all silver. Such a dumb, great idea. Oh, I love it. And then we also have the evidence box, which is, it's got a shirt, it's got a black light, it's got a pin, and it's a very thematic red web box. So Just be careful where you shine that black light. Be careful where you shine it. You never know you what you're going to get. find too much tangible evidence. <laughs> <laughs> Little baby handprints or something worse. I don't know. Man, I was just looking back on the, uh, the origin of baby hands the other day. It was one of our ghost hunts. Yeah, it was. We got to get back in there. But yeah, we're going to do a live shopping event. And if that sounds interesting to you, come hang out with us. It's a whole lot of fun. We're going to be talking about conspiracy theories a little bit. We did the same thing for the Sippy Cup of Knowledge. You guys blew us out of the water, yeah, as you, you always do. You showed up. You bought the thing. In 30 minutes, it you was it, gone. Bumped up your clearance at the facility. Mm -hmm, awesome. Mm -hmm. You don't show up. You don't get a hat. Bumping your facility uh, clearance down. Right, you're gonna you're gonna go down a floor to yeah. the basement in the basement. Mm -hmm. We've just we've just dug it out. There's no walls yet, so it's kind of just a hole. Right, but it it is there. It's yeah, it's got AC. <laughs> it's just a fan aimed yeah. down the hole. <laughs> um, oh, also this summer, Red Web Team, we're gonna be at RTX yes, here we in are. Austin. Yeah, July seventh through 9th. we're gonna have a Red Web themed escape room that Fredo and I are kind of putting our minds together. We're working with the escape game downtown, world-renowned escape room designers. And so we're going to work with them to kind of create a really cool, immersive bat squatch situation yeah. where you can see if you can escape them. A red web themed and slightly changed to our liking uh, escape room experience, mm -hmm, which, mm -hmm. I mean, I think it's just perfect for the task force at large. Oh, yeah. I will say we did it, and we did it pretty quick. We nailed it. So I'm going to have to up the difficulty. We also, can do that. We don't can be alarmed if I just, you hear a little, ee -oo, ee -oo, ee -oo, and I come in around the <laughs> oh corner God. on, on, a, on little, his little big on wheel. My little, my little big wheel. And I'm like, <laughs> hello, Task Force. I'd like to play a game. Is that Fredo? No. No. No, no it's not. It's <laughs> but yeah, if you want to learn more about that, we're also doing a couple other things yet to be fully landed on, but I think we're going to have at least a Red Web panel, top secret, but maybe you have a little clearance here. I'm just, I'm just trying to, you leaking I'm trying to manifest it is what I'm trying to do. Leaking, leaking information, it. or is this the act? Forcing no, I think to. if I leak <laughs> the information enough, it manifests it. Is that how that works? Yeah, mm -hmm. yeah. The, I'm getting shaking heads all around. Look, that sounds you, like it works. You start telling Task Force that we have a panel. <laughs> you're gonna have <laughs> to give know. us a panel. <laughs> well, we I want to have an annual meeting of the minds so Task Force can come hang out again, and this time in person, ask us questions, but also we have some fun ideas planned and a few other accoutrements that I won't spill the beans on just mm. yet because they are really strapped into that manila folder. I just you know when you like can't get those little two yeah. butterfly things. Gorilla to, glue. And then the gorilla glue's holding the lip down. I I hate a torn open envelope. 
I don't have a letter opener. So once I can get in there, I'll, I'll reveal what else we're doing at RTX. There we go. But yeah, if you want to get tickets, they're available now at rtxaustin.com. The ticket for the event includes all of it. You don't have to worry about a separate purchase for the escape room or anything. So yeah, come hang out. Otherwise, with that said, let's talk about today's fantastic sponsor. This episode of Red Web is sponsored by Rocket Money. Before we dive in, Fredo, I believe you've used this. Oh yeah, I use them to kind of track all the subscriptions I have, mm -hmm. which is a lot now. Oh and, yeah. And a lot of them, not necessary. So I went ahead and canceled that. And then actually yesterday, I just got an email that was like, you spent $800 less Ooh, last wow. week, uh, nice. this week than you did last week. And I went, what did I do? <laughs> what did I didn't do? It, and it, and it, showed, it showed me the different things that one that I was doing this week and then compared to last week. So I was like, awesome. That's what I did last week. Yeah. Okay. That seems super convenient. I definitely forget about a lot of the subscriptions I have. And if you have one week where they all land with their re-up, ugh, nightmare yeah, it's week. it's a big hit. Let me ask you a question, Fredo, Jillian. Yep. Do you know how much your subscriptions cost? No. Because most Americans think they spend around $80 a month on subscriptions. But Fredo, it sounds like you're finding out. You're saving. It's much more. But I thought it was 82 because that's just what people say. That's the average. It, uh, it sounds like a good average. I would believe it. But the actual total is closer to $200 a month. Ah! Yeah, if you don't know exactly how much you're spending every month, you need Rocket Money like Fredo has. Rocket Money is the personal finance app that finds and cancels your unwanted subscriptions, monitors your spending, and helps you lower your bills all in one convenient place. Over 80% of people have subscriptions they have forgotten about, and the chances are that perhaps you're one of those 80%. Yeah, I'm, Fredo, in you are. I'm in that statistic. Y yep, you are. A good example to stoke the mind and see if you're forgetting about one of your subscriptions. What about that streaming service that you got that one time to watch that one show and then you never stopped it after the free trial? Or maybe you got a gaming service because you're like, oh, if I get the seven day, you know, free trial, put the card down now, cancel later. Then you forgot. Now you're now you're strapped in. I literally canceled one of each of those. <laughs> oh my god. You are the perfect example. Over 3 million people have used Rocket Money saving the average person up to $720 a year. Very close to what you got saved. Yeah. Wow. Stop throwing away your money. Maybe you're the reason this ad is spelled out so specifically. They Wait, are they looking you, at my account? They're looking at your account. <laughs> are they pulling from my account? All right, Task Force, stop throwing your money away, cancel unwanted subscriptions, and manage your expenses the easy way by going to rocketmoney.com slash redweb. That's rocketmoney.com slash redweb. One more time, rocketmoney.com slash redweb. And with that said, let's get right back into the mystery. Let's dive into the theories that attempt to answer what went down here. And to my, to my knowledge, to my memory, a lot of these are really interesting. And do that thing where we come out of the episode going, I think we have an answer, but I don't know. I, I want to hear what oh, you think. Yeah. This hasn't happened again, has it? Since the blobs? 94? Not that I'm aware of. No, not that we could find. Just those, over the span of those three weeks, there were those six instances. And from what we could see, has not happened since. Hmm. Damn. Interesting. Maybe this uh, theory number zero, I'm going to put this one at contrails. <laughs> Some sort of weird <laughs> biological what? exhaust from a living spaceship. What? Let's get into the theories now, shall we? <laughs> um, theory number one, was this some form of human waste? One theory that residents of Oakville thought might have caused these blobs was the idea of human waste. Maybe a passing airplane dropped human waste over the town, causing everyone to get sick from the bacteria and the antifreeze that is combined with it. You know, if you've ever been in an airplane, you go to the little mm -hmm. stall that's in there, you yeah. go to the restroom. All I know is it makes a vicious loud scream when right. you flush the thing. So I hit the button and quickly plug my ears, but there are a lot of chemicals that keep it inert. So that way, you know, no biohazards can back up into the room and spread illness. But also since you're at altitude and it takes it into a place that isn't pressurized, it could freeze, expand, crack things. So. Antifreeze is, is part of the mix. There's oh, probably a few other compounds, I but I did not know that. Yeah. And so, uh, if a plane were to, if it were possible, uh, evacuate these bowels over a town at a speed that it just then, like, it falls out in a goop. And at that speed, it kind of just breaks apart into a mist and then eventually rains down. What's interesting is how did it last multiple weeks? Yes, because this isn't something that normally happens in planes. They don't just release the poop from the sky. Right. And then, like, what? Like, the same plane kept going over and over? Well, maybe there's or, a prankster like, pilot, you know? Multiple planes. Maybe he's from Oakville, and he goes, I hated it. I hated, I hated Oakville. I ran town. for mayor, and I never got it. 
and then just kept flying. <laughs> like, like it'd be the same plane over and over again, or a bunch of different right. planes. What were they like testing? Just dumping the poop? I, I don't know if they tested that, but I would be very curious if you could take the exact time windows that this happened. Remember, the first one was 3 a.m. Not a lot of planes flying in the middle of the night. Red eyes are way less common than day trips, but it is near Seattle, the headquarters of Boeing, and they do test planes out of Boeing there. I'd be very curious if you could find... Like records of a flight pattern? Yeah, like flight records. Yeah, exactly. To correlate when planes were nearby against the time of the rain, essentially, and see if there wasn't some sort of coincidental lineup there. That was one of the things that we did try to look for. Yeah, oh, I love that. Really, any kind of correlation in like, was, were all of these instances a certain amount of time yeah. apart? Like, oh, every three days, or like, what time of day did it take place? Mm -hmm. And what was the, what were the weather conditions? Just any like kind of external factors that could have influenced it, couldn't find anything. Dang. Oh, that's, I didn't even think about that. Obfuscated, muddied. Now, the FAA has responded to these claims to say that human waste from airplane is dyed blue. And so if this blob situation were in fact human waste from an airplane, They'd that they would be blue. They'd look like Smurfs. They'd look like Smurfs. Now, what if this was an intentional test that they pulled the blue dye out just for one plane? And, uh, and then they said, they it can't be a, us, it's not blue. All right, just to see if they can get away with dumping the poop. <laughs> I don't know why. <laughs> so you're saying Boeing was, like, just testing a bunch of planes that dump poop in the sky. Ah, you listen. You know, hey. The thought crossed my you mind. You gotta <laughs> think about all the angles. You gotta think about all the angles. Listen, when you got, when you got a tinfoil hat strapped on as tight as mine, you'll be thinking about all sorts of stuff. <laughs> all kinds of theories <laughs> squeeze right on out. <laughs> they squeeze right on out because the oxygen doesn't get in. All right, let's move on to the next theory. Jellyfish. It's another popular theory. What? And it's that the blobs that we were seeing in Washington were actually pieces of jellyfish. Since the Air Force was known to do bombing practice runs off the Pacific coast, 40 to 50 miles, or about 64 to 80 kilometers west of Oakville, it was theorized that perhaps they had exploded a school of jellyfish. Pause. That must have been such a violent explosion that it kicked that, that group of jellies up into the How stratosphere. in the world? It uh -huh. must have been the biggest school of jellyfish ever with an explosion so massive it propelled it over. Right. That's and then beyond it did testing. It six times. Yeah. Now Come here's on, now here's the bro. thing. We jest. We jest. And now, whether the Air Force is involved or not, I'll get there, but there have been times where fish have rained from the sky. So we are not in strange territory. This is oddly familiar, Because in fact. of, like, just, I don't know. Weather conditions. Oh, like, it, now, yeah, that's true. That's another thing that has some theories to it. Now, I'm going completely off the cuff. I've got no backup data here. So Task Force, correct me if I'm wrong, but basically cyclones or uh, water funnels potentially pulled aquatic marine life, you know, up into the air. And then when they disseminate, then they're caught in the eddies of the atmosphere or maybe were thrust far beyond. But, you know, if there was a water cyclone at some point that pulled up a school of jellyfish, it, it is possible in some morbid way that it scrambled them up enough to tear them into pieces and send them off. Because they'd be lightweight enough. Why? I mean, they would be wild. Very wild. Absolutely wild. Mm -hmm. I mean, I think the whole thing is like, if it happened once, sure. Yeah. The fact that like six times that's, mm -hmm. there's just no way this is when i then start to think all right do jellies normally swim in the pacific northwest are there rare moments when you can see them up there like you know if it's uh, el, la nina year or el nino mm -hmm. and certain currents are warmer than others and you know maybe they were swept off because again like you said this hasn't happened ever since so was it just a one-off weird year where there were odd currents and warmth where there shouldn't have been. So a school of jellies just made it to Washington and also a cyclone happened to toss them around or the Air Force bombed them. I don't, you know. Wouldn't we be able to see that in like the analyzation or, the, or like the dissection of these? Oh, I see what you're saying. You know I, what I mean? Like, I thought you meant like in weather the, patterns, but. I mean, no, def, that's when you, you definitely check the weather patterns and you see if there's any correlation. Yeah. But I mean, like, I feel like when they're trying to break it down, dissect it, they'd be like, it's like a, there's a lot of similarities to a jellyfish. There's a the, G-dang jellyfish. Or like the, the DNA pattern is very similar to a jellyfish. Mm -hmm. It's very curious. I'll just leave it at that. And it does rely on a lot of ifs. 
right? If this happened and this happened and if this happened, could this have been the answer? Honestly, yeah, but it is a lot of ifs and maybe that's why it was such a rare case that it happened once and then became a mystery. To kind of wrap up the idea of this being jellyfish, the theory continues to say that they could, these jellyfish could have been swept up into the clouds to then later rain down in Oakville, especially if they were in those smaller pieces. I mean, that's how hail is formed. Water droplets the size of rain freeze, and then you go, well, why don't they fall down as these tiny little pebblets? Sometimes they come down like golf balls. Well, because the wind and and air currents up in the atmosphere can be so strong, it it just sweeps them back up. They get wet on the outside, refreeze bigger, and they just build layers out. And so so if the atmosphere can hold up golf ball size hail for a little bit, it can hold up little pellets of goop. But for weeks, that's a good question. I don't know. I mean, there is like wind tunnels in the sky. Mm Like, you know, oh, you're talking about like eddies and jet, jet uh, like, like streams. streams. Yeah, like, yeah, yeah. Mm-hmm. yeah. Planes like to ride them. So yeah, some fuel efficiency. Mm-hmm. If you're crossing the the nation here in the U.S., there's one that goes east west. Uh, well, mostly one direction. I think it goes east. But oh, so that's a con- there's they're they're constant sometimes. Uh, more or less. I mean, mm-hmm. it's like the currents of the ocean. You can generally map them. They kind of have seasons to them, but on the whole, they average mm-hmm. certain places in certain directions. Yeah. Yeah, I mean that. Just that in itself could lend mm-hmm. a little bit to the theory. Yeah. yeah, that's that's exactly why, you know, if we ever did a series where we did more investigative stuff, because, like, you know, what we do here is kind of digest what exists. If we ever wanted to get a little deeper, that's the stuff where I'd look at, like, weather maps, weather history, and see if there are odd things that line up with these dates. That would be really cool. Yeah, strapping Christian to a really big windbreaker and seeing if he could stay in the current. I always was curious if a man could be a kite. <laughs> we give him, we give him a jar and a funnel, and we say, yep. "Go get him, Tiger." Go get him. <laughs> All right. Another theory for the blobs is that they were star jelly. Star jelly is also a clear gelatinous substance, and since the 14th century, has been reported as something that has quote fallen like rain. However, what exactly star jelly is is still unknown. Theories include bacteria, frog spawn jelly, slime mold, and algae. In most cases of star jelly, the substance only appeared once and then kind of disappeared until a future generation also witnessed it. Let me describe a few instances, or at least one instance of this of this jelly and see if there's any, you know, relation here that you can find. So in 1950, two Philadelphia police officers came across a strange, quote, domed disc of quivering jelly six feet in diameter, one foot thick at the center, and about an inch thick near the edge. When they touched it, it dissolved into, quote, an odorless, sticky scum. This then inspired the movie that we actually referenced earlier, The Blob. Another instance of star jelly occurred in 1983, when a gray-white jelly rained in Reading, Massachusetts. Tests done on star jelly by the National Geographic Society did not find any DNA. Which kind of matches a little bit with the uh, right. with the blobs of right now. So maybe this is this. It's another mystery. It doesn't give you an answer, but it gives you another mystery that says it's star jelly. And in this particular circumstance, it happened to be a little bit more consistent, and it was more scrambled. It didn't come down as one big bloop. It came down as something that had popped on the way down. I don't know. It sounds like such a large amount of bloop. Yeah, I don't know. But man, now I'm curious about star jelly and if it's edible. Also, why are the people just touching it? I I don't know, man. I've seen enough movies that when something alien comes down, yeah, duh, you run towards it, but you don't stick your hand in it. True. It could be like a cool alien tech suit or something, but like, you gotta scope it out. Right, you gotta scope it out. See if you can become an enhanced superhero. Right. Or if you're about to deal uh, with a, a scummy little yeah. demon lord. Or a parasite's going to take you over. Right. That's another one. I've. What's the one where like, oh the no, it, it was Yondu, the actor who plays Yondu. But no, he, that's he, not the faculty. Like a little, uh, oh, sp- sp- splice. No. Splinter. Slither. No. Slither. Thank you. Oh. I, where Slither, like it shoots out a little barb that burrows into him and then he ends up mm-hmm. becoming like the host of this thing. And then, then it's like, oof zombie movie kind of yeah good movie but man that that tickled a a latent fear in my (laughs) deep core that i did not need to experience moving on now a very compelling theory yet to come here government cover-up yeah i knew that kind of plays with the idea was uh was boeing involved were they dumping stuff experimenting with military stuff right 
With a lot of these theories not necessarily matching up for some people out there, there's a lot of citizens of Oakville theorizing that there must have been something afoot, something that they weren't being told. Mike McDowell, a microbiologist of the Department of Health, claimed that the sample of the blobs mysteriously disappeared before any more tests could be run on them. Basically, people kept samples of this thing so it could have some staying power. You know, they could, they could sample this into the future as we would get better tools to understand this stuff. But whatever samples were kept for the long haul apparently disappeared. Oh, well, <laughs> never mind. I take back my statement of evidence getting lost right, that earlier. Right. The mystery itself was too tangible. Right. Now the evidence is, is ghostly. <gasps> yeah. He told National Geographic this, quote, I came in and the material was not where it was supposed to be. I asked management what happened to it. And the exact words were, do not ask. They also went on to say, quote, this material, and I have no proof one way or the other, was manufactured by someone for some purpose. And for some reason, Oakville was chosen as the test site. That's spooky. That is very spooky. But I mean, here's the thing. I'm sure the government has chosen cities, towns, civilians as test subjects and test sites. Mm -hmm. If this is something that they tested, I, I, there hasn't been anything that I can think of that could possibly like that this is possibly the beta for mm -hmm. you yeah know what like, i mean i mean kind of like the initial test for yeah or like there's nothing like to this day that's public that i can think of that's like oh that it could be a spinoff from like, right from this i'm curious like and this is just you got me spitballing now on the government side of things and thinking more military, obviously you've got the Geneva Convention, so you're not going to use chemical warfare or biohazard warfare. But I mean, in a sinister way, is this a, a way to test the delivery of a bacterium to a to a people? Yeah, to a mass populace. I don't know. Yeah. The other question is, is this in a more positive way, a way to deliver something like a fertilizer or, you know, I don't know, something like a new iteration of something. So instead of fogging your oh. crops, instead you like drop down blobs that can then, I don't know, maybe they're pesticides or maybe they're fertile. I, I don't know. I'm just spitballing yeah, here. Yeah, maybe they're testing but something for agriculture people, and know? then like... Yeah. And you, you just want to know the implications. Yeah, but then why would you why would you not test that on a bunch of crops? Right. Why would you test it over... Well, then I picture, you know, some evil overlord spinning around in their dark leather chair in their, you know, Onyx Palace going, well, the studies show that it won't kill anybody so send it study the results they might get a cough or something we might lose a few kittens but i'm willing to make that bet that sacrifice right i don't know i listen i don't there's no, life a movie no i keep blurring the lines <laughs> it's very blurry <laughs> so kind of continuing on with this thought process some theorized that the air force was doing bombing practice runs you know, we talked about that in the jellyfish yeah, theory. Mm -hmm. Now that's being plucked for this one. They're saying that these bombing practice runs could have been testing other things like biological weapons. The Air Force has confirmed bombing practices nearby, though they did in fact deny the use of any sort of biological warfare. Some residents claimed that around the time the Oakville blobs appeared, they saw many military aircraft. So it. it's a wide open door to say something's going on and that the military might know something but on the same token, I got to call it out. You asked where the military scrambled to assist. And so was it causal or was it a reaction? Was the military presence something that caused the blobs or was the military presence something that was reacting to the blobs? That's a good question Ooh. for a task force to kind of ponder on. I'd love to hear your thoughts. That's but true because I mean, they could scramble the jets pretty quick. Um, man, who knows? Who knows? And then also on the flip side, it's like, did they not scramble military or I don't know, some type of aid because they knew what it was and they were mm -hmm. aware and they were the cause of it. So at that point they're like, look, we're freaking out, but we know we did it. So it's all right. good and we're not doing it. Anymore. Like, no, no, no. We're here to help. Yeah. Yeah. Damn. You don't, you'll never know. Never know. Well, hopefully we know. It's it's like the bloop, right? That was a, just a little behind the scenes task oh, yeah. force. The bloop was a test episode Fredo and I did way back in the day wow. to kind of hash out the format of this podcast. And through, that does have an answer to it. Whales, no? It was a deep ice earthquake, an yeah. ice quake, basically yeah. a super large glacier somewhere just cracking underneath and created such a loud, long noise. The different stations from yeah. like yeah. miles away mm -hmm. got readings. Yeah. I still prefer the Cthulhu theory, True. but you know, maybe it's for Wales the best. Whales was one of the one of the theories, I believe. Yeah. But so. 
This could be something that gets solved in a decade or two. If it happens again, especially, we can get better insight into it. And I would be remiss as we close out the episode, Jillian, one of our researchers, did put aliens as a theory, but left it simply at that. Gotta love it. Gotta love that it's in there. We don't have much to go on, but aliens. I mean, sometimes aliens get squeezed in. This is one that, like, you don't even have to have much to go on, right? Right. It's a substance that we don't know what it is. Mm -hmm. It happened multiple times. No clue. We had scientists on it. No idea. People were getting sick, and then that was it. Thankfully, it didn't seem too dire to humans. Mm -hmm. And the fact that it was just, like, raining, and I guess at some point, people were just kind of living around it or with it. Yeah, yeah. Getting used to it. I'm surprised that, like, hospitals and ERs and just fill up but what a what a wild thing yeah I feel like that's gotta be like in a like why am I learning about the gold rush of this country why am I not weren't like little like why am I not about learning about these from the sky this, this, this weird event that happened we did learn an awful lot about the gold rush didn't we yeah we did <laughs> damn i feel like there's other things i could have learned about right instead of you know some like the implications of the gold to get rush. rich on the river of the, the right you know, right of gold yeah well kind of closing out with some wild thoughts here about the aliens you know i've been uh this is gonna sound even more wild but ants okay just, they, <laughs> they talk in chemicals and pheromones now, who's to say aliens didn't come by, drop a bunch of flyers, but they're like, these smart creatures, much like us, must speak with chemistry. And so they drop down a bunch of chemical messages in the form of these baby blobs. And who knows, maybe aliens are the size of a thumb. We have no idea. So they drop down what they think are reasonable pamphlets for their species. And they're just blobs of bacteria. And we went, what in the world? And they've picked Oakville as their site to declare themselves. Yeah. And then they're like, all right, our job is done. In about 50 years exactly, our predecessors Come will or our harvest. successors will show up and, and the humans will have read our message and be prepared. That would be funny. And then there's like, I don't think they got the message. I don't think they got the message. I mean, what would be, yeah, I mean, like, what would be the way that the aliens would like, like, what would be the way that they'd actually disperse? I mean, like, mm. what, what's the point of it, right? Is mm -hmm. it to get a message across? Like you said, flyers. Or is it to just uh, implant things? Like, I don't... What if they, what if they are, a, you know, we, we're a carbon-based life form. What if they were a, a jelly-based life form and their ship was made of jelly and they spent eons coming to our, you know, six ships were, were headed this way. They're like, we found a civilization elsewhere. And when they enter the atmosphere, they're not used to it. They're used to like Mars or something. They're like, oh, what is this thick atmosphere? It's shaking our jellies. And then their spaceships torn just got and torn asunder. Yeah. And and so <laughs> for six weeks, we have ships raining down one at a time that were all spread out. <laughs> we'll be the search party. We'll make sure it's all good. <laughs> okay. And we're okay. It's a Friday. We don't normally record on a Fridays for this reason. Task force. Thank you so much for listening. And I do want to say it's been a while since we shouted it out, but thank you all for continuing to just storm the halls of Spotify and Google Play and Apple iTunes and giving us those five-star reviews. It really does mean a lot. And we are pushing 10K reviews on Spotify now, which is enormous. Oh, thank God, because we're almost shut down. Right. We want to show Every it. week they say, I need another 10, I need another thousand. I need another thousand. <laughs> and the task force comes through and it's like, oh my God. Right. We, baby hands is like, listen... If I don't get enough very, of those stars. Very big chair. He's hungry for those stars. Very tiny ghost. Right. <laughs> and if he doesn't get his star fix, he he's wont to haunt, okay? But yeah. we keep him around because we, <laughs> we feed him the stars. We feed him the stars. Right. <laughs> Goodbye, Task Force. <laughs> <laughs> we'll see you next week for another mystery. Boom. post credit scene. Oh, right. We don't have an episode next week, so if you made it this far, this is your reminder. We are off next week. Go check out our friends over at 30 Morbid Minutes, an amazing podcast, very similar tone and mysterious feel. You're going to love what they got. Possibly more goo.